folks. Uh, thought I'd take a few minutes today and walk you through a build of a JSN 1200. Uh, you might be able to use some of these tips and tricks to put together your own motor, or maybe you just find it interesting how we bolt together these motors. So uh, without further ado, we'll take you through the steps. All right, so next step is double nutting and tightening down these studs. So I'm just not gonna be able to do this with while holding the camera, but um, basically just tighten these two nuts together and then you can just go ahead and drive the uh, drive the uh, stud home. That's pretty much it. Tighten it down, you know, pretty tight, not crazy. All right, next comes the crank. So we've got the uh, bottom, or the, excuse me, the, the top of the cases flipped over, sitting on the studs. You can also use the cylinder if you want, it's kind of a stand. And we've just got the crank mocked up in here, just sitting here. Uh, just a, it's a, you know, easy way to look it over for any dirt or issues, make sure it's clean. And then while it's sitting there, I'm going to take the crank seals here. And I've started using uh, ultra slick engine, engine assembly lube instead of grease here. But you can you can use um, grease if you want, or uh, there's a another assembly assembly goo. It's called it's blue. I use that a lot for holding O-rings. That works as well. You don't need to go too crazy here, but you just want to get to get lubrication on your seals so you don't burn up a seal on you know the first startup. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and get the seals installed and we'll get the crank set in. All right, so there we have it, cranks installed. Uh, as you're probably starting to notice, this engine assembly really is no different than assembly of, of any uh, 701 style engine. You're gonna to wanna to do the normal bearing uh, alignment procedure to line up the pins so you don't push them through and whatnot. And uh, next we'll take, um, I like to use just brake cleaner. You can use whatever you like. But I'm gonna use some brake cleaner and get uh, these, the Ceiling services cleaned up on both set, both halves, and then we'll get it um, 1211 applied and get the case halves bolted together. All right, so we've got 1211. If you're not familiar, three bond 1211 uh, applied to the mating surface here. You can see it is a very very thin coating. Okay, um, does not take much, and it should not take much to seal up um, your case halves. I do glob a little bit here on the ceiling surfaces, especially. Um, you got to be careful in this area right here because it's thin. You don't want to apply so much that it squishes out into the bearing, but you don't. But you definitely want to apply enough that it gets sealed. And I do like glob up a little bit at the at the um, at your uh, crank seals. You also see a little bit of green film on on these bearings. I do use a little bit of uh, re bearing retaining compound just for safe measure. It's not really necessary, but I, I use it. Um, make sure if you're going to do that, you uh, clean the clean this, the bearing surface, the, the, this surface here, uh, with some brake cleaner or some sort of solvent just to make sure the, the retaining compound sticks. Um, so that's pretty much it. Now we can go ahead and take the properly cleaned, mind you, case bottom half and set it right on here. Now don't forget your pins. In, a, in JSN cases, you've got three alignment pins, okay? So we'll go ahead and set that on there with one hand. All right. Tap it down a little. And we'll go ahead and get the bolt started. So what we'll do is just bolt these down and uh, just normal, the, the normal Yamaha torque pattern uh, is totally fine. It's just circular in, inside to outside. Um, and you know, these are normal Yamaha uh, case bolts. So they'll get torqued to Yamaha spec. And then we'll flip her over and, and start on the top. All right, so we got her flipped over here, um, ready to start the top end assembly. So a couple things I like to do right now before I go much further is uh, take some, I'm just using clots. Uh, I think this is our 50. Um, I just like to put some oil down these, these lubrication holes, just to make sure there's something for the bearings. And that'll just kind of seep in. time okay and then I just like to go also right in between the webs here just let it run down into the bearings best you can okay this is just what I do everybody's got their own you know assembly techniques lots of ways to do this so don't stress if it's if you've seen something different or you do something different. 
All right, so next we're gonna start inspecting the cylinder. And uh, this one's already been through Nicosil, of course. It's a brand new cylinder. Um, but what I'm gonna do is basically look over it, make sure there's no issues in any of the ports, make sure the plater did a good job with the chamfering, which they typically do. This one's from Power Seal, which we've had really good luck with. Power Seal's a really, really well-known plating company. Uh, Millennium's good as well. Uh, Power Seal happens to be local for me, uh, which works out because I've been able to build a relationship with the owners and we get really good results uh, with pretty quick turnaround. So I'm also looking for any anything that popped up in the exhaust ports as a, as a you know, after the plating or anything like that. And I noticed probably from when I was porting the cylinder, there's a little burr right there. So I'm going to take this uh, stone here. This is for sharpening uh, uh, knives. This is the coarse one. I'm going to go grab the, the fine grit, slap some water on it, and just real quick, just knock that down. It'll, go, it'll come right off. The next thing we're going to do after that is plug these four holes here. Um, necessary for the casting process when they get pl plugged with just with uh, eighth inch NPT pipe tap or pipe plugs. Uh, you can see we can also inspect the bottom of the cylinder for any burrs. Everything looks good. Porting looks good. Everything's smooth here. Um, you can see that we extend this out and this out here, um, you know, just, just to get a little bit better flow into the transfers. Um, so yeah, so we'll get these capped up, get this burr taken care of, and then we'll talk about cleaning the cylinder. We got the plugs in the cylinder. It's all wrapped up. Just an FYI, I like to use normal old pipe tape and some 1211 on there uh, just for safe measure, never had a problem. They seem to have worked just fine. So these cylinders come from the plater already very, very clean, um, but you do want to go through them, you know, uh, wash them however you like to wash things. You can use a dish soap and a scrub brush. You can use brake clean, whatever you want, just to get the cylinder clean. Um, but then also the last step that I do, I take some automatic transmission fluid. You can use any, any well, ATF really. It doesn't need to be expensive or anything. And then I use that to scrub the cylinders. ATF is a really, really good detergent. Um, if you're familiar with Marvel Mystery Oil, it basically is ATF from what I understand. You can use that as well. Um, and basically what you're gonna do is use a nice uh, microfiber towel or something very, very clean. Um, and you know, scrub the cylinders with, with the ATF until you don't get dirt on, the, on your rag anymore. And then you do wanna go and, and try to wipe most of that ATF out. It won't hurt anything if, if, you, if, if it's in there, but um, it's better to lubricate the pistons with you know, normal two-stroke oil for, for startup. So that's what I'm gonna do now, and we'll come back once everything's cleaned up and we'll start assembling the top end. All right, we got the pistons installed. Um, base gasket sat on dry, and the cylinder pins installed, okay? Um, I didn't show how to install the pistons because it's just like installing pistons on anything else. Make sure you don't forget to put on your uh, your uh, circlips that hold the, the pin in. Okay, make sure you face your piston in the right direction with the arrow towards the exhaust. Simple stuff, not a big deal. Um, now, in this case, I'm gonna be installing this base gasket dry. That's because I know that the mating surfaces on a brand new cylinder and a brand new set of cases are going to be really, really nice. And I know that's gonna seal, or at least it has a high likelihood of sealing. On a 964 or an 1105 with stock cases, they're not quite as reliable in terms of, they might have a, you know, a low spot or a, a scratch or, or whatnot on the sealing surface. So a lot of times I'll 1211 the base gasket on those, on those motors. Um, installing the cylinder is gonna be very much like installing a cylinder on, on a 701 or anything else. You know, compress this, this, the rings carefully, ensure they uh, don't move outside of this, the pin lock, or excuse me, the, um, the pin that locks them in place. You don't wanna go past that because that will damage your cylinder and you'll do a lot of, you'll damage your motor in general. Um, this is all lubed up with uh, assembly lube. Um, I'm also gonna give it a, once, once, once it's all together, I, I douse the cylinders with, with R50, Klotz R50, and I also pour a, a little bit down in the, in the crankcase as well. So we'll get the cylinder installed next, and then we'll show you what, what comes after that. Okay, so the cylinder is bolted down. I um, just need to torque it. I usually go 34, and I just go a center out pattern. Don't have to overthink it. Um, so 34 foot-pounds on the, on the uh, nuts there. 
And then uh, after that, what we're gonna do is just do one final check of the squish. And I like to do that um, with just the, just the domes, no O-rings, just to make sure that there's nothing uh, getting in the way or screwing up the reading um, or anything like that. So that's what we'll do next. All right, next thing we're gonna do is check the squish. Um, so it, completely unnecessary, more of an OCD thing, but I like to wipe the top of the piston off before I do this. Um, if you can get it, uh, stained glass solder or, or solder that doesn't have any kind of flux in it is best. It's not gonna, you know, for this purpose, it's not really gonna cause any problems, but you know, it can, it can damage uh, metallic surfaces. So this is, uh, what is this, two millimeter thick solder. All right, a little tip, um, especially if you're doing this without rings installed and the, and the piston has a tendency to fall down. Um, gotta focus here. Put a little bend in your in your solder. That way, when the piston, th these these little solder things won't roll around. So if the piston goes down, moves around, you won't have any problems. So what we're going to do here is just take a dome. In this case, uh, this is not a dome that's going on. This is just a 120 dome. 120 is the step. That's the depth of of this little groove right here. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this on here, line it up as best we can. You see that we got a bolt here. Just kind of holding it in place. This doesn't have to be extremely tight or anything like that. We'll put another one in here. And we'll just tighten those down by hand. Nothing too crazy, make sure it's lined up. And then what you're gonna do is just rotate the motor over and that will compress that solder. And then in a second here, we'll take that back out and measure the solder. All right, so we pulled the, we rotated the motor around Pull the dome back off, and let's see what, how things are looking. Yep, so just as expected, you'll see that's a little bit squished, okay, on both sides. And then we're just gonna measure that with a set of calipers and see what we got. Okay, so here is my set of calipers. Make sure they're zeroed out pretty well, they are. Okay, we'll take and we'll measure just towards, you wanna get it as close to the edge Near, near where the edge of the piston would be as possible. All right, we're in the home stretch. So we've got the squish checked and the power valves are all sanded in, clearanced, etc. So these do need to be fit to every cylinder. I make them uh, a little bit unfinished on purpose so you can match the exhaust port as they come up. And uh, they do sometimes need to be a little bit clearanced uh, on the on the bottom edge there because uh, well frankly the, the machine work in that pocket is it can be a little bit off um, from the foundry or the nickel sill plating can can widen the, the port there a bit so just a little touch up I use a belt sander um, like a like a tabletop belt sander uh, doesn't take too long uh, that's pretty much it so they're in fit tight to the pistons. You really just want to make sure that they're not hitting the pistons. So rock them each direction as you're rotating the motor around. Make sure you're not hitting the pistons. Um, if you want to measure it, you know, 15, 20 thou clearance is about good to the piston. Um, you know, basically you just don't want it to want it to catch. If it does catch slightly, it'll it, it'll just wear in. It's not the end of the world. Um, but I can tell you, I've tested very very tight clearance with power valves and slightly looser clearance with power valves and it's very hard to tell a difference um, at all so don't don't sweat it uh, it doesn't need to be hitting the piston to, to perform well so uh, next we'll install the power valve assemblies uh, don't forget to put your springs on before you put all this together I like to use a little bit of assembly goo just to hold the o-rings in here um, so I think on these cylinders it's not an issue but some of the 964 cylinders and possibly some of these these, these bolt holes do go through to a water jacket, so I usually put a little bit of um, 1211 on the bolts just to be safe. Um, that's pretty much it, but we'll get those assembled and then we'll throw the head on and we're getting a near a complete motor. All right, so now we'll just get the power valves buttoned up. Pretty simple. Don't forget your springs. Don't forget your O-rings. We're gonna put these on and I need to use some 1211. So we're gonna 1211 the bolts real quick. as we put them in. Just a little bit. There's, I, 
these are very unlikely to leak. I don't even think these go into the cooling passages on the cylinder. So it's not really a big concern. I'll just leave them loose until you get them all in. These, these holes for the, the head of the bolts are uh, pretty tight. So I'll make sure they're all gonna go in okay. Every once in a while I get some of these bolts that you, you watch them, the head will be off center from the rest of the from the threads and you'll be wobbling around. And that can just make it a little tight. So far so good on these. And the procedure is the same on the other side. All right, so we'll go ahead and put the power valve boots on. First step, put the back spring on. Second step, just kind of wiggle it, wiggle it on there. A little bit of assembly goo can help with this, so make sure you don't tear these as well. It can be a little, a little finicky. I just rotate them around once they're on, just make sure they're fully seated. Step uh, with no springs, I like to just pop the caps in. All right, got some bolts for the caps. All right, so they're bolted down. Throw the springs on. Make sure they move freely. Power valves are good. All right, let's get the domes installed. I like to still put a little bit of grease on um, these O-rings that go in the top of the dome, just to aid in them sliding in and not getting cut by the um, dome. So just put a little grease on them and they should go in the head first. Makes it a little bit easier. Okay, domes, same deal. I like to well, we can actually put the domes in right now. So there is one uneven notch here that goes towards the center, in the, or towards the center hole, I should say. And then you just carefully, you try to keep it centered when you do this, but snap your dome in, just like that. Lather up some grease on your fingers and then apply it to the O-rings. It's easier than trying to put it in the groove I've found over the years. Just. Get them stuck in there. The idea here is just don't you don't want them falling out when you flip this head over. That's it. Really the whole concept. Okay. Make sure you're putting it on the right direction. It'll only go on one way. Sit around here. All right, the head's all torqued down. Wow, it looks great. Beautiful. Needs a little cleaning. Got some grease on her. Looks really nice. So next up, um, we will do block off plate install and a pressure check. We've got the intake installed um, with the reeds. Uh, gaskets on both sides of the reeds. Speed plate on because we want to pressure test as much of this motor as we can. And then uh, I use just these, these pipe plugs. You can get them at a hardware store. Um, and then on the exhaust side, because we're not doing an exhaust manifold for this customer, um, we're using one of our block off plates here to block off the exhaust side. All right, so we're right at about five PSI. We've been sitting for about 10 minutes. Everything looks good. And this motor is ready to ship.